Hello guys, my name is Nato Surfix, and today I'll be your host on this video for Play.gg. Today we're going to be taking a look at Phase 2021 in the Stockholm Major versus Phase 2022 in the Antwerp Major. Firstly, let's take a look at Phase Clan's last match in the 2021 Stockholm Major. This was against Virtus.pro on Inferno. Phase Clan struggled with banana control and Kickert very often crept up close to the half wall. This meant that Virtus Pro could take Banana more or less for free after FaZe had already suspended their utility. And this happened definitely more than once. This is round 10, the exact next round where Kickert does pretty much an exact replica of what he just did. This time though, netting him both the kills on the B-bomb side. Taking a look at the first map in the 2022 Grand Final of the Major, I was happy to see Kerrigan and Rain had come up with some sort of solution for exactly this problem. But as we probably all sort of expected and assumed, the big difference all came down to one man. So while I was expecting to make sort of a Phase 2021 versus Phase 2022, instead it became more or less just a comparison of Olofmeister and Rops. Watching through the demos, Olofmeister actually did a pretty good job. Like in this round, where he is staying alive for a lot longer than he realistically should be allowed to. And not only that, he manages to find late round impact on top of that. As most of us probably know, Virtus Pro is a very passive team that likes to run down the clock. And with Olof's passive playstyle, that actually worked out very well in his favor on multiple occasions. Olof found massive impact in the rounds where all he had to do was survive, and he typically took one or two players down with him. There were some rounds here and there where Olof had to finally venture onto the other side of the map, and it was obviously mostly when the T's went to B. Now, in this round, Olof gets contact onto Flit, and instead of committing to the fight, look how well he baits him out here to ensure that Kerrigan can finish off the kill. From watching the demo, Olof looked to be a man who was honestly having a pretty good day. His aim was sharp, and he did also find pretty decent impact in some of these rounds. The main issue, however, was that Olof Meister was not that good at sort of seeking out the action. Olof had a lot of rounds where he was either playing super passive in pit or super passive on the A bomb site, and rarely did I see him do anything extra. This is literally the signature move of Virtus Pro, sending one man on the one bomb site and leaving the other on the other side, and Olof completely misreads it. For some reason though, James does not want to plant this bomb. When the T's played in a way where Olof could not just tuck in and hide, he didn't look nearly as strong as the other rounds. When he was on T-side, he looked like a man who was very afraid of making a mistake, though he was very good when following the plan. If someone flashed for him, he would go for it, and typically with success. But in the rounds when FaZe really needed a strong lurk, he oftentimes was just a bit too passive. In this round, where Kerrigan pushes down mid, this is basically the most aggressive we see Olofmeister be in the whole half. And this isn't even that aggressive. But he does pick up the kill, and with this kill, instead of being a bystander, he takes charge. Olof wasn't doing a whole lot wrong, basically nothing, but he also wasn't doing anything extra. From Rops' demo, this looked a whole lot more dynamic, like in this round, where the double nades come in from short and he now assumes that they've sort of left that area. He gets an opener onto bit and comes back into a safe hiding place. These kind of openings I never saw Olof get, and to be fair, they are quite hard, but I would have liked to at least just see him attempt it. This is the first round I'm showing from Rops, and already we can see him create way more chaos in the Navi defense than we saw Olof do all half. Not only did Rops get an entry, he's also putting pressure in the one space of the map where he now knows Navi are most likely not. And this is sort of the dimension of Lurk that I hoped we would also see in the Olof demo. Unfortunately, we didn't. In this round, Rops went from sort of an aggressive Lurk to now a more passive type Lurk, who's just putting pressure. And now in the clutch, Rops has massive impact, wins the round for FaZe Clan, and uh, yeah, just through and through a great round from him.
Rops was, in general, a whole lot more dynamic on his CT side, playing a million positions, and where in this round Olof would have almost certainly tucked in and tried to hide, Rops instead pushes forward, kills one player and stays alive for his team. Now a 4 vs 3 turned into a 3 on 3 that unfortunately FaZe Clan lose, but Rops does give them a way back into this round. And honestly where Olof Meister won a lot of rounds on his aim being super strong and him not being in the greatest position, Rops was sort of the polar opposite, always being in the right spot but his aim sometimes letting him down a little bit in this grand final. In Counter Strike there is sort of easy impact and there is hard impact. Easy impact is sort of taking the kills that fall into your lap, whereas the hard impact is the impact that you have to work for. For Olof, most of his impact came from him sort of locking down a position on CT and the teams running straight at him. Olof also did have some impact towards the B-bomb side of the map, but it was mostly rounds where he just had to go there and seal the deal, not ones that were very hard to win. For Rops, he did sometimes, like with this mid push, go for the high and hard impact plays. Unfortunately, he was spotted earlier by Electronic and he gets killed. Olof's way of playing to stay alive was picture perfect against Virtus Pro, which is a very slow team. But against Navi, or at least this current iteration of Navi, I wonder if it would have worked out as well as Rops' way of playing does. Rops was way more active in the mid round, like in this one where he smoked short and nade simple down to 50 HP, but this was yet another round where it felt like it just came down to a little bit of aim. But don't get me wrong, Rops is obviously a insanely mechanically skilled player, and normally his aim is superb. And while it seemed like Olof relied a whole lot more on his aim, Rops was always in the right positions and making great mid round decisions. Personally, I believe the key to being a very consistent Counter-Strike player has way more to do with decision making than having great aim. And even though I think Olof was a very capable player in the demo that I saw, Rops just has that little bit of extra, the little bit of X factor that will change a major contender into a major winner. I think we all watched this live from Kerrigan's point of view, this very crucial 3k in the dying embers of the game. But would that really have been possible without the man lurking in the shadows? And when it really comes down to it, I think there's only one player in the world who could actually pull off a call, a play and a move like this one. So to summarize, the big difference between FaZe Clan 2021 and FaZe Clan 2022 is not a big tactical or strategic overhaul. CSGO is a game of percentages, and Rops is at least 5% better in this role. And just like that, it's curtains for Na'Vi. In this major, and potentially for this legendary lineup. Thank you so much for watching the video.